Maybe, maybe. Oh, looks like we are live. Oh, testing on a new system again. Yay. So I am Dr. Nicole Laird with Hayes County Physical Therapy and Wellness, and I'm here with Medea Taylor from Phoenix Body Work and Wellness and Phoenix Oils. And we are talking today about wellness and looking at sleep specifically, how to get better sleep, more restful sleep, um, and improve your overall sleep quality. So thanks for joining in. And if you tune in later, we're excited that you took the time out of your day to check this out. Um, so I wanna start just a little bit talking about some ways to improve your overall sleep. And then um, Medea is gonna talk about some oils that can help enhance sleep and wind, wind you down at the end of the day to, or in the middle of the day if you want a nap, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Today it's a nice rainy, cool day here in Kyle and Buda, Austin area. Um, so it's like perfect sleeping weather, but last we're at work. Um, anyway, <laughs> so the couple things that I like to talk to, especially my new moms and our um, and our moms that are just trying to get into a new routine with life, especially now that we're in this crazy coronavirus week, whatever it is at this point, um, is setting up a nice sleep routine. We talk about routines in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, they help us stay grounded and centered and mindful throughout the day. But having a good sleep routine will set your body up for a nice restful sleep in, at night. And so what I like to advise people to do and something I work on myself too. So, um, but turning off electronics within at least an hour before bed. So getting away from the TV, getting away from the computer, getting away from your iPad to, to set, set yourself up for a nice long restful sleep. And so um, the other thing that has become a big deal lately is the blue light. So that's where the electronics come into play, stepping away from those at least an hour, preferably an hour and a half to two hours before bed. Um, obviously that's not always possible, especially if you have to get your work done after your kids go to sleep. Um, <laughs> but we were just talking about the blue light blocking glasses. I know a lot of people have experienced a lot of good results with those. So that might be something to try if you do have to be on the computer or on your iPad or on electronics well into the day or throughout the day, it might be beneficial just to help your body um, to get off of that super hyperdrive um, overdrive that we tend to get into when we're constantly bombarded with electronics throughout the day. So that's step number one. And then taking a nice, making sure you have a good routine. We've talked before in the last couple of weeks about meditation and mindfulness. And so finding a you know, five to 10 minute time span that you can have a wind down phase where you just sit, close your eyes and start to check in with your body and relax from head to toe. Um, even just doing a, um, like I did a quick mindfulness last night and it was a five minute where you just thought, you think of a thought, something great that happened in the day and you take that thought from your head and you let it gravitate all the way down into your chest, into your stomach and all the way down to your feet and just letting things go from your day so that you, your mind is not constantly racing, 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 because I feel like that's what keeps a lot of us up at night, especially as moms. <laughs> We tend to go, oh my gosh, I didn't take the laundry out. Oh, I forgot to pack a lunch. Oh, I forgot to do X, Y, Z. And so taking all of those pieces and just letting them, let your day just melt into whatever whatever surface you're sitting on or laying on and just mindfully drawing yourself into that restful, peaceful state before you drift on to, off into blissful sleep. Um, so creating those routines, I've heard some of my clients have said that making a nice hot cup of chamomile or herbal tea before bed, um, my recommendation on that is to do it at least a couple, two hours before bed so that you don't have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and interrupt your sleep cycle. Um, but that's also a nice way to just trigger your body to say, okay, every night at eight o'clock, I'm going to have a cup of tea, which means that by 
nine o'clock, 9.30, 10 o'clock, I'm winding down to go to bed. And so you have those triggers. And that's the biggest thing when we're creating new habits is you need a, a trigger. And that signals to your brain and your body that, okay, these, these, this is what comes next. This is what comes next. And so I think that is also a really nice point where you can start to phase in some of these oils that um, you're going to be talking about is adding that into your routine. So I would like to know more about what kind of oils would be beneficial for sleep and how we can incorporate those into our evening routines. Yeah, and they are so wonderful to do. Um, you know, talking about settling down and getting into a routine. Um, you know, yoga, some calm down yoga, and with some of the oils that I've talked about for that, and um, and just like you said, the meditation. I know I've talked about some of those oils. I mean, the number one go to oil for calming and relaxing is lavender, and um, DoTerra's lavender is a high enough quality that you can't ingest it internally. If you have another brand, please make sure that you check with that. Also check with your doctor or medical provider if you ever have any questions about ingesting essential oils. Um, but yeah, you were talking about the chamomile tea, lavender, a drop or two in that mm. um, is, is just a really nice boost to help you settle down and relax. You can diffuse lavender. You can um, apply it topically. You can diffuse it in the air. Did I already say that? I think I did. Um, but yeah, I mean, lavender is my go-to. I love to make, well, I make a linen spray for my bed at night. And what I put in it is I put vodka in because it's an alcohol, so it'll clean and it'll dry quickly. But I actually love the Serenity Blend by doTERRA. This one you cannot ingest. Oops, sorry, there's my camera. You cannot ingest it internally, um, not in the liquid form. But this is my go-to for relaxing and calming and getting ready to go to sleep. They also, doTERRA also makes a lovely soft gel in the Serenity. Mm. And one to two of these 30 minutes before bed, um, I'm guilty of racing thoughts. I get into bed and all of a sudden I think about 10 things that I was supposed to do today and just didn't get to. Or, you know, what am I going to do tomorrow? Or, oh, I just had a great idea for my business. Or, you know, it just... It never ends. And so when I have nights like that, I take the Serenity Soft Gels. And I just take one because that's all I need. Um, it helps me go to sleep faster. It helps me stay asleep longer. Um, also, when I started menopause, sleeplessness is definitely, you know, insomnia. I would be up at 2 o'clock in the morning wide awake. And, um, and so this kind of helps me get through that. Um, so I don't have that issue. There are so many oils that are so good for sleep. Any of the calming oils, and I have a whole list of them here. Um, but balance is a great one. Uh, clary sage, sandalwood, Roman chamomile, cilantro, surprisingly. Yeah. I know, I was surprised by that. Melissa and thyme. So these are all really good oils, plus the breathe oil. I'm not sure if I've talked about that one. It's kind of a eucalyptus, so it helps keep your airways clear as you're sleeping, which means a little bit less um, snoring at night <laughs> sometimes. And you can, the serenity and the breathe blend beautifully together to diffuse in your bedroom at night. And, and it's safe for kids, you know, to have it in their bedroom to help them sleep better. We keep a diffuser in Avery's bedroom because he has a hard time going to sleep. And I mean, he's a kid. It's not dark out at 8 o'clock. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, you can also put these oils on the bottom of your feet. If you're not a fan of, you know, strong scents around you, put them on the bottom of your feet, and that'll work. Vetiver, by the way, is a really good one also. Um, yeah, and I think, I think you covered everything else. I kind of looked up some other things. Um, a warm bath with mm -hmm. Epsom salt. And some lavender in it is just relax those muscles, relieve that tension. Um, and the other thing, too, just relating back to what we eat, mm -hmm. you know, in the evenings. If we're eating heavy carbs, and I, I looked this up, I pulled this actually off a blog on the doTERRA website, um, it causes a rush of glucose to the muscles and could cause muscle twitching. So if muscle twitching is waking you up, you know, maybe go easy on the carbs around dinner time, or if you eat late. And it also recommended that we try nuts instead. 
because the protein and the fat, they digest more slowly. And, um, and of course they have magnesium in them, which also helps to aid with restful sleep. So, so many things we could do. The diet part was the most surprising one to me because I'm like, oh, I personally, like the other night I made this great chicken cacciatore. I made homemade bread, French bread. It was really good for my first try. <laughs> and we carved up. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, hmm, maybe make better choices there, huh? <laughs> And I think that's the other, just, just like stopping your fluid intake a few hours before bed, really wanting to make sure you're not eating a lot of high carb or sugary foods. I know for some people, a lot of sugar or the caffeine. Um, I know there are some people who claim that caffeine is, doesn't affect them, but because of the way the components in it, if you have a cup of coffee at noon, even, you're still breaking it down by midnight. So, like, it's still in your system. Oh, so, <laughs> or I, something like I have to look it up to get the exact timeline right. Um, but basically, if you're still drinking coffee in the afternoon, you're still digesting it, and it can interrupt your sleep cycles. Whether you are aware of it or not, you may feel like you're getting really restful sleep, um, or you're getting good sleep, but maybe you're not getting into some of those all the different cycles that are necessary for good restorative sleep for your whole body. Um, so looking at caffeine intake too, maybe try a half calf or something in the afternoon if you really feel like you <laughs> jolt, I don't know. I know, you know, there are a lot of people who are more sensitive to certain foods and drinks than others. So just kind of think about that and be aware of it as you're preparing your sleep routine. Um, what else should we know, Medea? Well, when you can, massage is really oh, helpful yes. <laughs> for relaxing the body True. and helping sleep. And hopefully we'll hear back from that soon. Um, yes. I'm looking forward to getting back in my studio and giving massages. Um, so I've heard that a few people, and this may be in other counties, so this may be a county specific, but if you have a referral from a doctor or a chiropractor, you can get a massage. Is that true? That is true. They, okay. You are allowed to do medical massages and you can get that referral from your doctor or your chiropractor. Interesting. Okay. So. That's, well, that's a nice, that's a small win, I guess, for now. <laughs> it is a small Maybe. win. Um, you know, and then the other thing is, you know, we just always have to talk about before we go back to work, what does comfort level look like? Right. Because, you know, a massage is a very close up, intimate <laughs> experience. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot to think about there and a lot to you know, decide what the best way is. We're getting a lot of good information from our professional yeah. associates though, so. Good, well, hopefully everybody will flock to getting a massage first thing when they can so that they can have more restful, peaceful sleep, mindfulness, and that physical component too. We talked about the stress in the muscles earlier in our series and I think being able to relax through your entire body is really helpful, not only in restoring the muscle strength and, and ability to move, but also in that, that sleep and the overall stress management. So I think I'm a big proponent of getting massages as well. <laughs> yeah, me too. I really miss mine also. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I think next week we're coming back with some more information around surrounding wellness. Um, we're going to be looking at challenging our minds and our body um, and continuing the series, looking at nutrition. Oh, we talked about nutrition already a little bit. <laughs> we're going to continue on the wellness journey. Um, we're still working on exact topics. We've got so many we want to cover, um, but we will be back on Tuesday around 1 o'clock. We look forward to seeing you all there. If there's something you want to see, let us know and we will get it up if we feel like we are the best people to cover those topics. If not, we'll connect with other people and um, we will, yeah, we'll look forward to bringing you more information. Thanks. Thank you.